here. The red line shows you that the same exposure to nicotine or cocaine has a short burst of actually releasing glutamate. Okay, so it's doing two things. Chronically starving those cells for glutamate, creating a longing, and acutely, meaning in the case of nicotine, maybe for only 15 minutes, causing those neurotransmitters to be released at the neuron junction by a different mechanism than the one I just described. So it's affecting glutamate two different ways. It's blocking it in the basal level and it's stimulating it for a short time. And you can see how diabolical that turns out to be because taking repeated hits of these substances creates a desire and the same substance temporarily relieves that desire. So as you move down this curve week after week, your longing increases and you're dependent upon that spike to bring you back up to a, a level of satisfaction, right? Uh, if you were designing a diabolical system, it couldn't get any, any better than that. Okay, what about this turnstile protein? We have, uh, in the past year, looked at the effect of protandum on every gene in the human body, the all 25,000. What I'm showing you here is a section of a spreadsheet that looks at about 25 of those genes. And these are the ones that are most affected by protandum. And so there would be a, a thousand more pages like this, uh, and I have all of those and I've spent hours looking through them. <laughs> now, <laughs> as though I didn't have anything better to do with. Um, <laughs> And what you see here is, you know, about 10 lines down is this cysteine glutamate transporter. It's one of the genes most affected by protandum. And here we see that uh, this, I think, is in brain cells. We've done it in vascular cells as well at two different concentrations of protandum each. And that 6.49 is at a high concentration of protandum. And what that means is it increased the number of those turnstile proteins six and a half fold, 649% more in the presence of protandum. And this is it in bar graph form, showing you first what nicotine does. And so we're starting with normal healthy cells, normalizing their level of this turnstile protein that's causing this problem before and after nicotine. And what you can see is the nicotine really represses the expression of that protein. So the cells don't have these revolving doors. They can't get cysteine in to make glutathione. They can't get glutamate out to satisfy your brain. What does protandum do to the same protein? It upregulates it. In this case, at a low dose of protandum in endothelial cells, vascular cells, 250% in the other direction. All right. So this, again, this is not a, a human clinical trial. This is not even an animal study. These are putting together two dots and drawing a line between them because we think we know how this system works and what will happen. And so the question raised by all of this is can protandum help break addictive behavior? And elevating GSH has been shown uh, on the one hand to be efficacious in humans trying to break addictive behavior by increasing uh, or by methods that cause increased glutathione uh, in this region of the brain. And they can break behavior to both cocaine and nicotine. We know that protandum elevates GSH levels and it's in part by increasing that turnstile protein. And what we found is that, or what has been found by others, is that that turnstile protein is also important in preventing this longing sensation from developing in the brain. So the turnstiles are absolutely essential. And then finally, anecdotal evidence, much of which I gleaned from you at the last Elite Academy, and a lot since then, suggests that indeed protandum might be a useful adjunct and that clinical trials to really prove this are probably an appropriate uh, a question for us to ask. So that's where we are. Again, many of you who have connections to smoking cessation clinics and so forth have contacted me. I think we're well on our way 
uh, to providing an answer for this and what an answer that would be. I mean, this is a real need in society at a number of levels. And, and there is no good way, some of you probably stopped smoking in your lives and it's, a, it's not an easy thing. It's a tough thing and I have total sympathy with those uh, who are trying to, to do that. All right, that's number one. Number two, I want to inform you of a new human clinical trial. This is about the use of protandum in the metabolic syndrome. 